I think you need lots and lots of tips, really. <laughs> uh, but I'm not sure if they were, they'll be my top, but among, uh, amongst the top. Um, I, I would say definitely starting the lesson off with a bang. Actually starting the lesson off in an interesting way to capture your student's attention. It's just the same in the theatre, really. If the actors start a performance, if they start a performance well, and they capture the audience's attention, then they've got more chance of holding their attention uh, throughout the play. And, and, and quite often, you know, actors feel, we didn't start well. We didn't start well today. That's why the audience weren't interested. They didn't applaud so much. And I think it's exactly the same in the classroom. And unfortunately, quite a lot of the things we sometimes feel we need to start a class with are, aren't things which capture their attention. And the advantage of capturing their attention is you can spend a lot of time, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, actually getting their attention. Uh, and that's a waste of time. It's just a waste of time. And I think it's very much the kind of things we start a lesson with. Uh, I mean, we have to take the register very often in class. But that is so boring. <laughs> Everybody knows their name. And so it immediately kind of, this is what we always do. We always start with the lesson with the register. You know, be much better, as long as we remember to do it, to, to do the register later in the lesson. You know, we don't, if we don't have to do it right at the beginning. Or, or, or things like homework. Homework is, yeah, we have to do the homework. We have to look at the homework in the lesson. But we don't actually have to do it at the beginning of the lesson. The beginning of the lesson should be what's new, and homework isn't new, it's old. It's yesterday's stuff. It's not today's stuff, it's not now. And of course, the, the classic sentence, which is the, probably the most often used sentence in, an, in any classroom, really, is open your book. Immediately you say you open the book. Uh, open your book. The students know what to expect. They expect what's in the book. So if you, could, if you can start your lesson off with something, something, guessing something about the content of what's going to be in the book, something which they have to, they have to use their brains to, to find out when they actually open their book. If you can start the lesson off with some kind of problem-solving thing and then say, open your book to find out the answer to the problem, that is a, a great way of starting the lesson because all these ideas you start the lesson off are usually different. They haven't seen them before. They're not in the book. Uh, in fact, you know, a good course, they should be in the teacher's book. Uh, ideas for teachers how to start a lesson. So that's probably one, one, of, the, the, one of the things too. I, I would say, if you want to motivate students, you've got to capture their attention at the beginning of the lesson. And you stand more chance then of keeping it throughout the lesson. Another one, I think, is this, you've, the students have got to be involved at all stages in the lesson. They've got to be doing things and taking part in it. So it's not just good enough to open the lesson with, for example, a, a problem-solving activity, which they, they can give their ideas for. But the lesson should be full of that kind of stuff. Uh, it should be full of you know, solving problems. Uh, what, what are your ideas? What do you think is the best thing? What, uh, any, anything where you can involve them in, in the content. Uh, and, you know, the, the best way of doing this, of course, is any kind of guessing activity where they have to guess some things about a picture, which they then find out the answers in the text, or any kind of, any kind of guessing, problem-solving activity. The problem with that, the problem with problem-solving activities is that teenagers, they love guessing but they hate guessing in the classroom. If, if you ask students to guess something, and then you say, what's the answer? They won't tell you what their ideas are, because they're all too embarrassed, or they might get it wrong. If you, are, if you teach like seven-year-olds, six and seven-year-olds, uh, and you ask them to guess something, something which they can't possibly know the answer to, you know, something about the, the, the planets or whatever it is. These seven-year-olds will put their hands up, you know, and say, me, me, me. They will, they will try to guess what the, the, the solution to this problem, guess the answer to this problem. Uh, but over the years of school, the, the hand goes down. 
and it goes down because when, when, very often when we ask students to guess, then we say, that was the wrong answer. <laughs> wrong. And if, if you say wrong enough to people who are trying to guess, then they don't want, they won't, they will stop guessing. I don't know the answer, you tell me. That's what they will say to the teacher. And, and so, for t especially for teenagers, I think, guessing is dangerous. It's dangerous because it could be humiliating. Their, their colleagues could laugh at them. And they, they won't guess freely in the activity. If they go home and watch television and there's a quiz show, they'll, they'll guess because there's no danger in it. So we have to make guessing in the classroom. Guessing is one of the greatest ways of learning things. We remember, if you guess something, even if you get the answer wrong, you remember the right answer. Uh, and you learn far more if you try to guess what the answer is. It's one of the greatest ways of learning things, by guessing what, what the answers are. But the only way we can do that with teenagers is to make it safe. And so the guessing, especially at the beginning, later it, they will get used to it again. You can win them back. You can win them back to guessing as an activity. But uh, at the beginning, you have to make it anonymous. Uh, to make it safe, and so, and so, uh, you know, get them to write the answer, get them to do it in groups, but never individually, never ask some, an individual, what was your guess? Get them together to talk about it first, and then say, what's your group's guess? Or, or to write it down anonymously, and, and then hand the answer to, the, uh, to, to you as the teacher. So, so that's my second. <laughs> Um, third one, I better make this quick because I, I answered very fully those first two tips. Uh, have, a, have a pencil and a pa uh, have a, a pencil and something to write on, a piece of paper. Basically, every student needs to have that. Uh, it's surprising you'd think that's what every student would have, a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper. But actually, uh, if, if you observe classes, you often see classes where students have nothing to write on and no pencil. So, you know, when you're doing your training at the beginning of a course with a new class, one thing you have to really train them to do is you have to have a pencil. You have to have a paper. You have to do everything to get that, to get them to do that, to have a piece of paper in front of them and something to write with. And the reason for this is uh, there's, uh, there's so many th Thing, opportunities in a lesson where they could actually do something with that piece of paper and that pencil. They could draw a piece, a, 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 an item of vocabulary. They could, they could write down an answer if they're guessing. Uh, they, they could compare that with their students. Uh, they, uh, they, they, there's so many things. Even if they doodle, at least they're doing something with that piece of paper. But I, I've seen so many classes where students did not actually, they said nothing in the class and they did nothing, a whole class, 50 minutes. And they, they weren't doing anything at all, absolutely nothing. And, the, uh, you know, again, you can think of lots and lots of ways of things you can do with a piece of paper. So constantly in the lesson, you should be asking those students, do something on that piece of paper, write that answer, write, you know, draw a picture of the piece of uh, item of vocabulary. So, yeah, that's my third tip.